What's up, folks? Spencer here. Today, we're going to be talking about handling errors or exceptions when your app is in production. Uh, when we're in development, if it's a JavaScript error, we're going to get that red screen error showing up. But in production, we're not going to have that there. And even if there was, there's no way for us to know about it because it's not only us, hopefully, using our app. So what do we do about it? Well, first, let's discuss uh, some of the challenges that go along with capturing bugs uh, in React Native. And one is based off of kind of the primary advantage of React Native, and that's that from one code base, we can target both iOS and Android. Now, that presents an issue or a challenge for us, and that's that we've got three runtimes to, con uh, to consider. So we've got the JavaScript one, which is where we're writing our code. We're writing JavaScript stuff. Our JavaScript code can have bugs in it. It's going to have bugs in it. Uh, and then we've also got the iOS environment and the Android environment, which is where the app is actually running. It is a native iOS. It is a native Android app. So we've got that environment to consider as well. So with that, we need to factor in JavaScript errors and native errors, and we want to be able to capture those and find out about them. So what I've got here is just an app uh, that causes a bunch of errors. So I can make a bad request, and then if I go to my debugger, you can see since I'm making a request to ASDF, that's not a valid URL, not a valid API. It's just going to throw an error uh, for us, which we're just console.logging right now. Now, the other one is more of a fatal exception. So when I do this bad state change, we're getting that red screen of death. That would simulate a crash in a production environment, which we're definitely going to want to know about. So the way I've found to do this without any sort of dependency on a outside service is a package called React Native Exception Handler. And to use this, all we would have to do is say yarn add React Native Exception Handler. Or you could use npm as well. Once that's complete, you could go ahead and say React Native link React Native Exception Handler. Now, the reason we have to run React Native Link is because this package will also go ahead and capture those native errors for us, which, as we've discussed, we want to know about. So there's two functions that we want to use uh, to actually capture these errors. First, we're going to import from React Native Exception Handler, set JS Exception Handler, and then set Native Exception Handler. And based on those names, you can figure out JS is going to capture those JS exceptions, native's going to handle those, uh, the native ones. So what I like to do, uh, kind of thinking about this, basically the both of these are going to capture uh, global errors or uncaught exceptions. So that means we're just going to somewhere in like our primary app.js or index.js, uh, we're going to go ahead and set up some handlers here. So with the setjs exception handler, I'm just going to go ahead and refresh this app. We're going to get a Call back to set JS exception handler. Okay, and in here is where we actually handle that error. Uh, so for example, you could do a fetch to some API on your server where you can go ahead and log those errors. So this set JS exception handler is going to take two arguments. We're going to get the actual error message, and then we'll find out if it's a fatal error that'll make the application crash. Um, and in this app, all we're going to do is say uh, console.log the error, and then we'll just say if it's fatal. We're also going to alert the error.name. For example, obviously you're going to want to put those on some backend or something uh, so that you can analyze those for all of your users. So with that done, if I go ahead and say make an invalid request, we're not seeing anything here. If I do bad state change, we'll see our actual uh, red screen, dismiss it, and we're not actually seeing anything again and that's because by default, this package doesn't work in development, which is ideal. Uh, so right now, since we are in development, I'll just go ahead and enable this for development. Go ahead and reload this. Um, and to enable that in development, you can just pass true as a second argument. So if I try this again, we get our typical red screen error. And then we do see that we've got this error showing up here. And we've got all that additional information uh, over in our console here. Okay. So something you're going to want to do, though, is, you know, if you've got these caught exceptions down here, uh, you're also going to want to notify or be aware of those from a development perspective. So what I like to do is basically 
reload this, I'll go ahead and pull this out into its own little function. And we'll say, uh, let's just say handle error. That's going to pat get error and is fatal. We'll say const handle error. Okay, we'll do the same thing here. And then in here, we'll just say caught global error. So now if we go back, cause these issues, rather, sorry, let's go ahead, take this handle error function. And now with our catch function here, when we can use this anywhere within our app, it's very reusable. We can go ahead, pass our error, and then we'll just pass false because this wouldn't be a fatal error. Um, and we can kind of be aware of that uh, inside of here. So now if we do this, I'll go back to my log, make an invalid request. We're seeing we've got this type error showing up, all this necessary information here. Um, and then with, so looking at this, we just see we got that const.log, uh, which is meaning that it's just our manual catching of that error. We can go ahead and handle it in a standardized fashion. If we make a bad state change, uh, dismiss this and then go back to the logs. We can actually see we've got, we caught this one through our global error handler um, and we've got that information going on to our server or wherever. Uh, to handle the native side errors, which we won't be demonstrating here, but we'll just touch on that. We would again say set native exception handler. We're going to get an error string here. And then you just want to go ahead, do the things uh, with your error here to again, pass it on to a server. You're not going to be able to actually notify the user like we could with the JavaScript errors uh, because the application is going to crash. Java or React Native is not going to be running anymore at that point. But the way this package is set up, you can go ahead and pass that information along to your server so that you, your other developers, are aware of any errors that happen. Now, a big thing here is that we can capture the errors in production and all that, but we still have to set up the back end to go ahead and uh, capture, analyze, and then present all of those issues to our developers. And that's a whole other thing uh, that we need to set up. And at this point, this is just what I personally do. Uh, I would suggest you might want to look at going with an actual dedicated service. Uh, my service of choice is Instabug. There's also uh, Fabric Crashlytics, uh, Bugsnag. There's all kinds of different options you can use. And when it's possible, especially when it's something pretty important like this or like payment processing, um, I like to use a service and pay for a service that specializes in that. Instabug, that's their business. They catch errors. They do it for iOS. They do it for Android. They do it for React Native, Cordova, all that stuff. And that's what they do. It's a dedicated service. They've got that dashboard. They've got the notification set up. That's all stuff you don't have to spend your time, uh, your money on to actually build out. And honestly, the service is probably going to be a little bit better or much better uh, because they're dedicated to it. Just like with payment processing, I'm going to use Stripe, I'm going to use Braintree, those types of things because that's their business. They handle that stuff day in, day out. That's what they're 100% focused on. Whereas I'm focused on building out my application, which someone just needs to pay for. I'm not building payment processing. I'm building an app that accepts payments. So that's kind of my thought process. It's a consideration to take in because reality is your time is super, super valuable. So uh, it's good to spend it on your application versus building supporting things. So I hope you found this valuable. I hope it's at, at the least it's a good way to start catching errors uh, in your production application so that you at least are starting to build that awareness and at the least notify your users that, you know, something happened, the app's going to restart. So I hope you found this valuable and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.